Is this thing on? Are you ready, Matt? You're listening to Box Office Avengers with Matt Diaz and Ernesto Santos. Good evening, folks. We have a wonderful evening's entertainment lined up for you. We know each other. He's a friend from work. We're going to dive into our first spoiler review of the week, which will be Mank, directed by David Fincher, written by Jack Fincher, which was uh, which is David Fincher's father, and he actually wrote this screenplay a long time ago, and his father had passed away, and it was a patch uh, a passion project for David Fincher to to write and you know to uh, to make the story come to light. And so with that, Ernesto, what are your thoughts on the movie? I want to hear, hear what you got to say. Um, I did not like this movie. Really? I really wow. did not enjoy this movie, nor did I really enjoy Citizen Kane. <laughs> Whoa. That being said, I mean, it, I, I don't – and maybe it's just – Maybe it, it just it's just over my head or like I I don't know like I just I really I really didn't enjoy either of them but I understand like the the purpose behind it all like why I understand the significance behind it all like like what he did was a big thing like you know calling out w- William Hurst like basically calling him out as a person in movie form like during yep. this you know. During that, that that's a big you know I understand the big deal and I understand I felt like if I had watched it if I was in the 1940s and I had heard like things about Hearst like you know what I mean like if I was yeah, there yeah. if I was more in the know about it then I would be able to appreciate it more but I'm gonna be honest like I fell asleep multiple times watching <laughs> both films I tried really really hard and may I don't know maybe I'm too dumb. Maybe I'm too dumb <laughs> to appreciate these films, but uh yeah, I didn't I didn't really I didn't really enjoy it. I think what threw me off the most, it's not even so much that it was in black and white, is the and the, and I can't knock Citizen Kane because the movie was made in the nineteen forties. But the audio in this film was and it felt like they were trying to be it was shot very similar to how um citizen kane was like yeah. you know like i felt it felt the feel like literally the feel of the film was mirror image like exactly the same but damn they couldn't have used some better audio equipment like <laughs> like i just couldn't i don't know i couldn't really hear the movie that well yeah i think they wanted to try to level it out i think they did their best i was watching a couple of like uh explained videos and reviews videos um on youtube about when i finished watching make and th- uh, it was saying that david fincher was trying to match the style of citizen kane he did he that want- yeah he successfully did that. He-, <laughs> he wanted to like even like you know the more or less the, the, the quote-unquote cheap effects he wanted to replicate that he basically he wanted to make the citizen came of mank like he, like he a did. Lot be- a lot a lot of beats were very similar. A lot of shots were very similar. It was like even the way the story was structured. Like yeah, I felt like the way they told the story was almost identical to how Citizen Kane. It's almost like they did a Citizen Kane on Mank. Yeah, I, absolutely. And even like the even the story Citizen Kane because I I also rewatched Citizen Kane. Uh, and uh, you know I honestly Ernesto I think the movie holds up. Like I I grant it was slow. In definitely indeed but there was like that story of like what does rosebud mean that that's that's your through line there and then from there like you're kind of sled yeah spoiler alert (laughs) i mean sled (laughs) spoiler alert from a movie that was made 80 years ago (laughs) yeah 41 so 80 years 80 years ago um yes yeah the rosebud is a sled and that was the you know again this is a spoiler review um the uh that was like his last good child memory yeah that's why that was his last you know the shit the sled was the last happy thing he could think of you know what that reminds me of it reminds me of the pinwheel from um inception yeah absolutely <laughs> like yeah. the whole thing leading <laughs> yeah. up to this one like childhood memory but i mean i get it i i understand it's important and significance i will i will say that gary oldman as always gave an excellent performance 
Yes. Oh, like, man, he was, he was, he was fantastic. He was fantastic. But he was the only thing that was keeping me semi interested in the movie. And it was two hours long. <laughs> it was it was a long movie. Um, I do like one of the lines that he said. Uh, and actually, it wasn't him. It was like it was a, a, a particular scene, which I thought it was like great, like kind of capsuling what the movie was as well as Citizen Kane. He said, um, I think one of the people who's reading like a first draft and he was telling Mank, he's like, the narrative is one big circle, like a cinnamon roll. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. Mank was saying this. He was saying that the narrative is like one big one big circle like a cinnamon roll not like, not in a straight line pointing to the nearest exit you cannot capture one man's life in 2 hours all you can hope is to leave the impression of one and i thought that was a really good way of explaining that i think it was a good way to explain what mank was trying to write he didn't want a straightforward story he wanted people i guess to really think about it and he wanted to tell he wanted the narrative to be kind of like you know the investigation that was happening in Citizen Kane, whereas like we are getting pieces of his life through like revisiting people in his life while also seeing pieces of his life, trying to find the connection of Rosebud, but also learning about you know Citizen Kane himself. Yeah. Um, and I thought that was an interesting way to tell the story. But Mank was also along that line as well because we were learning Mank through a series of flashbacks. And you know, and there was one scene in there that I felt like <laughs> was fantastic. And it was the, the first time we see – we go to MGM Studios. And it was a scene where uh, like he, – he was like they were walking – and the guy was like the head of the the head of MGM Studios was talking really fast, and he was like, uh, "Do you know where I feel emotions? Here, here, and here." And he pointed to his head, his heart, and his balls. That's where <laughs> I feel emotions. So that's where you got to hit me in one of these places in order for it to have um, a good film. And he's and then he said, and which the story rings true today. He said, "This is a business where the buyer gets nothing for his money but a memory. What he thought still belongs. What he bought." Still belongs to the man who sold it. That's the real magic of the movies, and don't let anyone tell you any different. Yeah. And I was like, that is a very business way of approaching uh, the movies. And uh, to me, I was like, I was so engrossed with that scene. I was like, oh damn, like yeah, like to me, I loved when they went like Hollywood stuff, like when they yes. showed us MGM, the old set, old set. Um, there was a scene also how much showed how much of a dick the MGM Studios guy was, where he like visited all of his employees and he was like, uh, "Hey everyone, we need to like scale down your pay, but like, but we, if we really try hard enough and really come together and like, and eight short weeks, we'll give you all your money back." And he's like, "What about you? Like, are you gonna sacrifice your money?" He's like, "No, but I am." And then he comes up with some bullshit story, and then like he like changed the subject. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And, like, everyone's cheering for him at the end of it. And then he turns around and is like, how would I do, Mank? I did pretty good? You think you think I sold the crowd? Good. All right. So now we have their money. We cut their pay. And I'm like, this asshole. My God. Uh, but, like, to me, those were, like, like the highlights. But it's it's not a movie that it, – it was fascinating. It was – it's a good film about, I guess, film history. Because you get to see how, you know, more or less a movie was made in a movie form and not a documentary form. But I, I will agree with you that after that, there's really not a lot to revisit about it. No. Like, you don't really get invested into these characters. No. I, would have, I, would have, I would have liked to have – this to me, this would have been way better as a documentary. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, there were a lot of parts that were intriguing, but – and I was another video that I watched kind of explained it very well. It was like you're you're hearing people having a conversation of nothing you knew about. Like you don't know who these people are, yeah. and so it's hard to get invested into these to these characters and their conversations when it feels like you're the odd man in the room who doesn't get the inside jokes. Yeah, like they're talking about people, but it, and it can be people like they're just referencing and they have no they have nothing to do with the movie. But right. they're like, but they're talking about real people from that from that time period. But unless you know that, then you're not, you don't really get it. You're just like, okay, that person's not there, 
cool. All right, what's next? <laughs> yeah, and and like you said, I'm sure at the time when Citizen came, Citizen Kane came out, um, I and I you know in again a couple of videos that I watched, they said that Citizen Kane was a flop in the 1940s. It was not yeah. a hit, uh, but it was nominated for all of these awards and ended up only winning one, which was best screenplay, which Mank received the award for. Um, so it's kind of interesting that, you know, with all of that, and now today it's being praised as one of the greatest movies of all time. And, <clears throat> you, you know, you kind of look at it, why, why, what, why does it feel that way? And honestly, you know, if I were to put my two cents into Citizen Kane, I feel like it was just trying a lot of different things that normal film, like honestly, the cinematography alone, like it was ahead of its time. It was definitely ahead of its time. It was like, it was doing, you know, filming tactics that people have never done before. I believe it was like, a movie who like uh, there was like one tracking shot where the little boy was always in frame from the window, but it mm-hmm. looks like and then, but people were like wondering why they did that and they were like oh they just put a, pull the desk apart, I'm not desk a table because when the shot's over you see a table right in front of it, so like how do you do that, and it was like well it's easy you just you know we built a machine to pull the table apart so the camera can go through and then you pull it back together. And then also there's like these low angle shots. I'm like, well, how do you do that? Oh, we just cut the floor open. And then there's that shot. Like it was like apparently there a lot of shots were uh, revolutionary because you got to see the roof. A, lo- a lot of the roof back in the day was for the lights. So they didn't want to show that. Obviously, they want to keep it, you know, leveled. Um, but they were able to come up with some sort of cloth to hide the lights so they can actually have the roof there. And like so again, really ahead of its time, and so you can appreciate for all those technical aspects of it. And there's a level of appreciation of what you know Herman Mankiewicz went into to create this movie. Uh, especially you know he just got into a car accident. He had a very strict deadline. Um, you had Orson Welles who was not very you know cooperative. A lot of people you know he got writing credit for, but did he really write anything of the script? According to this movie, he didn't. (laughs) Yeah, he didn't write anything. He didn't write anything, but yet you wanted to take all of his credit, even though it was an agreement for that. Um, But you know that this guy is kind of like on you know the end of his career, basically. The Mank was, and so yeah, at the end of the day, you know, again, I feel like you can appreciate this movie for a lot of different reasons, and you can study this movie. As part of film history, but to say that hey, you know, so you want to go back and rewatch Mank? No, I I don't. <laughs> I don't. Um, what, what do you think? You know, anything else? You know, we we talked about Gary Oldman. Obviously, I can feel that you're not. You know, do you see the appeal of giving it Best Picture Drama nomination? Given the history surrounding Citizen Kane and just Herman Mankiewicz in general, and like the deep connections it has with Hollywood, no, I don't. There's not not a. It's not surprised me. I I wouldn't be surprised if it won. I'm like if it won, I yeah. wouldn't be surprised. But like at least him, at right. least Gary Oldman. Um, I do like how you know David Fincher kind of. He kind of went above and beyond to try to make a film, as close. I mean that's something to be said there, technical wise, of like how he tried to make a film kind of go back a little bit and that's i'm sure that's not easy to do like hey yeah. i i know we can do i know we can do all of these things now but i need you to scale it back a little bit let's go back let's go <laughs> back, back to the beginning <laughs> yeah no color you know cheap effects um and kind of give it this you know this interesting history that a lot of people might not known about or even known that this guy even wrote uh citizen kane so like i said i think this is a good like if you're a history buff or, or film history buff then there's a lot of appreciation for it. If you like Citizen Kane and you love that movie, there's a lot of appreciation for this movie as well. If you like David Fincher and cinematography, I think there's some aspects there as well. But aside from a study, that's that's really it. Like that's all you got. At least I, I like I like the story, um, and you know the dialogue was great. Lily Collins was 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 good in this movie as well. Um, but yeah, that's there. Also, did you notice that Bill Nye was in the movie? No. No. Where he was, was he? He was – it was one of the flashback scenes and I think like Mankos was walking down the street and there was some guy, you know, driving this political agenda, um, you know, kind of on a soapbox and it was Bill and I. And it was funny because I recognized the voice before I put the, the voice to the face even though I was seeing both at the same time. I was looking at this face and I was like, that voice sounds familiar. I'm like, that's Bill and I. 
Bill Nye's Nye in this movie. <laughs> Bill Nye the science guy. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there was that. And there also, there was a lot of, like, they kind of drove a lot of politics. This was also a time where, you know, the film was, you know, getting out of the talky phase and going into the to the sound, you know, part of filmmaking. And they were using, they also realized they can use film filmmaking as propaganda. So they were, like, filming kind of fake propaganda to get certain people elected so that was also part of the mix as well and you know i feel like there was also a lot going on in the story that it could be a little bit hard to follow exactly what's going on like we said it feels like you're the odd man out of the room not understanding anything yeah so if you really know the uh the history then i feel like that you can appreciate the movie but if you're kind of running blind then i feel like you know you're gonna miss out on a couple things but I think the nominations are 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 there. I I honestly believe that Gary Oldman, for his performance, is like the only thing out of everything that's been nominated that I believe should win the award. But it's hard to compare with Chadwick Boseman's uh, performance and Myrani's Black Bottom. That's what the mm. competition is with right now. Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's a it's a tough sell, which we'll we'll get into that later this month. But I uh, yeah, it was it was it was all right. Like it's not a movie to revisit, but a good... I mean, Matt, if you really enjoyed it, you can say it. I just, no, I no, just, no, I, 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 I really I agree did. with you. Like, I felt, I felt like it. You know, at the end of it, like, all right, I watched it. Like, I didn't really need to feel the need to go back, and I appreciate it for everything that it was for film history. Uh, but I, I don't see myself revisiting it again. Like, that's kind Agreed. of it. Yeah. Um, so there we go. There's our spoiler review. On, unless you have anything else to say, Ernesto. Oh, I don't. Okay. <laughs> All right, so there's our spoiler review on Mank, which is available on Netflix. Hey, thanks for listening to this edited version of our weekly podcast, Box Office Bingers. If you want to hear the full version of all of our episodes, which includes us discussing entertainment news, movie and TV reviews, guest interviews, and other things we've been watching, you can find us on wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you want more from us, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And find us on our social media channels on Instagram at box office underscore bingers, Facebook at box office bingers, email at box office bingers at gmail.com. And Matt, we're even on the ticky talkies. We're on the ticky talkies at box office bingers. Once again, thanks for listening.